Today, I'm going to be talking about new functionality we have added in the astronomy project. To compute solar eclipses, we need to do two things. First, we need very good control on the position of the sun, the earth, and the moon. And then once we have that very good position, then we need to do some computations to compute everything we want to know about the eclipse. And this is something that we do with a technique called Besselian elements. Astroposition is a function that allows us to compute the position in the sky in any coordinate system of any object. We can do it uh, in real time, and we see how the position of the sun is changing. With that data, we can also produce maps of the sky. So for example, this is the map of the sky around um, Betelgeuse. So the function solar eclipse will report the date of the um, next eclipse. For example, we can use astrographics to produce a map of the sky observing from here on that date, and I'm going to move the date by h hours. So what we see is that as time progresses, the moon goes in front of the sun because we are in Champagne here and not exactly on the path of totality. The, the eclipse is not going to be total. It is going to be almost total, but, but still partial. And then there will be time. Notice how the sun is moving also along the uh, ecliptic line. In Wolfram language 14, we have added several functions to the report information about the position and the timing of the moon. So one of them is new moon that reports the dates of, of new moon. We have also full moon, and there is a general function called moon phase data to report arbitrary phases of the moon. There is another one, which is called lunation number, which is a counter of new moons, starting from the first moon of year 2000. And as we did before, we can see how this is advancing. Right? So we are getting closer to new moon number 295. With solar eclipse, we can compute the date of an eclipse. So again, by default, it gives the date of the next eclipse. And then we can compute properties of that eclipse. For example, what's the type? It's going to be a total eclipse. There is a new property called eclipse maps and that will produce the map of an eclipse. And we can do this for any of the 72,000 eclipses that solar eclipses that there are in the time span covered by the NASA uh, ephemeris. So another thing that I want to discuss a bit is cycles in eclipses. So one famous cycle is the so-called Saros cycle, which happens every 18 years and 11 days, more or less. And so every eclipse belongs to a Saros series or Saros family. Our eclipse next year belongs to family 139. So with this, we compute all the eclipses of, a, of the Saros family 139. And this is a family that has been active since year 1501. So here we can, it, it contains 17 one eclipses and you see it runs for more than a thousand years. So then another important cycle is the so-called Inex cycle. And our e eclipse is this in the Inex family 55. So we have a family, sorry, a property to get both numbers together. And this is very useful because here I'm going to get all the Saros Inex pairs for all the eclipses between year 1000 and 3000, which are this number of eclipses. We put them together and every point here is an eclipse. This is the Saros number. This is the Inex number. This is our eclipse. Here I have some manipulates to explain this technique of uh, Besselian elements, which is a way of computing the intersection of a cone with the uh, ellipsoid of the Earth. The key idea of Besselian elements is constructing a clever frame that moves. It's centered on the Earth, but it's always perpendicular to the uh, axis of the, of the cone. And with these, you can get this Besselian element functions that allow you to compute anything. Here I have an example of how to get various uh, geometrical elements. These are the standard. And then by doing this computation, which you see here done with simple functions, you get exactly the same result here. This is the key technique that is used for computations in, in solar eclipse.